Hey Jody here from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today is part three of a How to TIG Weld Aluminum series. In part one, I asked for questions and comments. One of the most frequently asked questions was, what about AC frequency? You know, can you explain where you would want to use certain frequency settings? A lot of newer TIG inverters have this setting. Today I'm going to take a look at that and try to answer some of the questions that came in on AC frequency settings. Where do you, where do you use a low frequency? Where do you use a, a higher frequency setting? And what's a good all-around setting that'll, that'll work for most everything? Let's do it. We're going to start off using the lower frequency settings here. And this is at 50 hertz on an outside corner joint on 8th inch thick material. And I'm using a rounded tip here. I'm going to be using a 330 second electrode with a rounded tip and only about probably about 14, 15 CFH on the argon flow, 100% argon. See the arc starts on a rounded tip aren't that good. They wander sometimes, but on something thick like this doesn't really make a lot of difference. But this kind of helps kind of fan the arc out and wraps that puddle around both corners the way you would want it to on an outside corner like this, at least most times anyway. There's always an exception to the rule. About probably 125 amps here, a little bit hotter here when I'm just showing what it's like if you want to really sink it in and get penetration on the other side. All right, another similar joint is that you just took these pieces of angle and put them back to back and you wanted that bead to wrap all the way around both ends. Uh, it, works out, it works out just great. So old transformer machines are great for this kind of stuff. They're great for everything, to be honest. We'll see uh, some more different frequencies in just a minute. Uh, this is an aluminum casting repair that I did at JD shop on a, a jet boat pump, uh, or outboard motor jet pump. And uh, for castings, where you need a lot of heat, but you don't necessarily want to penetrate, you need heat just because it's thick, but you don't want to penetrate into that casting and, and cook out all kinds of oil and impurities. And so here I'm just walking that 50 hertz up, letting the cleaning action work its thing, boil some oil out of that part um, before I ever start puddling. And so now, once I get the cleaning done, then I start puddling a little bit, and I'm just trying to wash it like a braze operation, just barely flow metal, not try to bring out any impurities. Okay, let's go to higher frequencies now. Here's a good application, a thin T-joint. This is a T-joint test uh, commonly given for aerospace type jobs, and the criteria is here, you got to penetrate all the way into that corner, into the root, but you can't really suck back. You can't really melt back. You can melt through a little bit, but you can't suck back. And so that 250 hertz helps you if you do melt through. It helps you punch it through instead of suck back. That was my experience anyway. All right, this is a 063 lap joint. And I'm going to start off using 60 hertz here just to show the difference between 60, 120, and 400. See, this sounds kind of like a transformer machine. It's very similar to using like a Synchro Wave 250 or uh, a Lincoln TIG 175. And as long as I, you know, keep my arc tight and do everything right, it comes out pretty good. I think I've got the AC balance set on uh, close to 70 here for all these joints. Notice that when I get to 120 hertz here, the Miller tells me pro. And that's the Miller basically saying they feel like 120 hertz is the best all-around setting to start with. And I kind of agree it's a really good all-around setting. I might even say 100 hertz would be a, a, a better all-around setting. But this is 120 hertz. See, it's not, it's not terribly annoying to listen to. And it did seem to actually pinpoint heat a little bit better and it seemed to pick up the travel speed a little bit. That could just be me because this is the second joint I ran. I was kind of getting a little bit more in the groove there. But it's working out pretty well. Overall appearance, eh, I bobbled a little bit. Probably just me. Uh, now going all the way up to 400 hertz. This is annoying to listen to. I'm telling you, I, I would not want to do this all day long having a mosquito buried in your eardrum and I would be I would be uh, looking for a different vocation if I had to do this all day long I think and the differences are subtle it sounds way different but to me it's not doing anything a whole lot different than the 120 it's just annoying to listen to I think that if you set this up on an automated application you might notice a difference uh, 60 Hertz here again 
120. Here comes the 400. Mosquito. To me, the differences are very subtle. Uh, there are differences, but they're, they're not like night and day. A little bit narrower bead on the 400 hertz, maybe. Could have, been, could have just been me. All right, another application where higher frequencies help are on an edge buildup, where you really want to pinpoint heat, get a good crisp arc start. This is a, just an edge buildup on the 063. Uh, 330 second electrode is not the best choice for this application. I just wanted to see if it would do it. And it's not going too bad, but you could do a lot better with a smaller electrode here. And, you know, I've done this same weld using uh, Synchrowave Wave 250 and dropping down to a 1 16th or even a 040 electrode. And you can do it. You can do it with the Synchrowave Wave transformer machine uh, just as well as what I did right here. Probably better. I didn't do a great job here. Now you can help yourself out here if you don't have frequency adjustment just by clamping some some chill blocks, some chill bars on either side to trap the argon, dropping down your electrode size, and using a gas lens. All right, well, let's do a quick review here. Higher frequency settings tend to work better on thinner materials for me. Uh, the lower frequencies I will use for thicker stuff and for outside corner joints where I want to wrap those corners in, and I kind of want a bigger, uh, less pinpointed arc. And then on aluminum castings, I use lower frequencies as well. I remember attending, I remember I got invited to the Lincoln Advanced Motorsports School, and they have stations set around in, in the little lab area, and you can weld chromoly, and then you can get up and go weld cast aluminum. They have a big uh, V8 aluminum head there, and a station set up for that, and they have some little grooves milled out of it to fill in to simulate a casting repair. And I remember lighting up on that thing at about 120 hertz, and it would hardly puddle. Another guy who was attending the, the class said the instructor just told me if I lower the frequency, it'll, it'll uh, put more heat into this thick aluminum here. And so I, I did. I dropped it down to 50 hertz and puddled almost in just a second. And I couldn't even puddle it at 120 hertz. So that was an aha moment for me. And that's when I started experimenting with lower frequencies. And I do that now. When I do an aluminum casting repair, I usually drop down to 50 or 60 hertz. If I'm doing thin sheet metal, I'm about 120 hertz probably, sometimes a little higher. All of this is a lot of preference. You saw earlier in, in the arc shots and everything, you saw some improvement as far as a, a little narrower bead, but the end result, the 60 hertz, looked as good or better. So go figure. You know, a lot of it is your hands and your eyes, and you're making, as a human, not a robot, you make subtle adjustments without even necessarily realizing it. So this is a lot of food for thought. Uh, I learned something. I hope you did too. Remember, the way I support these videos is through my online store at weldmonger.com. I have a TIG-only DVD for sale now. If you're interested, it's got a lot of TIG welding aluminum stuff on it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.